So, higher maths, unit 2, practice assessment, NAB 2. Outcome 3 on trigonometry, trigonometry and compound angles. Now, in this outcome, there are 11 marks available, and in order to pass this, you have to get at least 7 out of those 11 marks. The first question, question 6, is only worth 2 marks. There's actually quite a lot involved in it. All it's going to be is to solve an equation of the form of either sine, cos or tan of a double angle. As an example, I'm going to do, I'll just go for the middle one, cos of a double angle. Now, the angles involved here will be one of those common ones that you know that have exact values, 30, 60s and 45s. So for this one, I'll pick one upon root 2. That's one of the ratios you should know. Can you remember these? Certainly you can have that big table and try and remember the big table by rote, which isn't ideal, but if it works, that's fine. Or you could remember the triangles that generated them in the first place. I'll have to take time out just to remind you of those. The first one comes from a square. If you have a square, so all the sides are equal, and cut it in half down a diagonal, that angle must be 45 degrees at both sides. And the simple ratio of sides, since they must be the same, the simplest pair I could put down are 1 and 1. So that's the first set of angles from this then. Right angle triangle, use Pythagoras, 1 squared and 1 squared is 2, so that must be root 2. The 1, 1 root 2 triangle, that's the one that gives 45 degrees. You'll also need to remember which sides give which trigonometrical ratio. For that, if you like, you can remember that so ka Toa, sine, opposite over hypotenuse, cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent, opposite over adjacent. Or more simply, the sine is opposite the angle and the cosine is next to the angle. But notice for 45 degrees, both the sine and the cosine, since the angles are the same in both parts, are both 1 upon root 2. So you can see in this question, it's a 45 degrees that's going to come out of it. But it's not 45 degrees, because for this one, even though I haven't put any limits at the side here, the convention is, if you write one of the trigonometrical ratios with an angle without a degree sign, then it's taken that it's in radians. You should notice that throughout the books and looking at previous exam questions. If you see something like cos x, it means angles and radians, and that's the way it would have to be for differentiation and integration and so on. If it's meant to be in degrees, it will show the degree sign. So in this one here, this is in radians, and the question in fact will say that, whoops, I don't know why I did that, that x is between 0 and just pi radians. The other triangle you'll get will be the one that comes from half of an equilateral triangle. In an equilateral triangle, all the angles are 60 degrees, and all the sides are equal. If you cut that in half, then you'll have a 30 degrees at the top. But unfortunately, I can't use the simple ratio of 1, 1, 1, because I'm cutting that in half. So I'll have to double up and make it 2, 2, 2. So that's an original side of 2, that's a half side. Use Pythagoras, <coughs> longest side, hypotenuse, 2 squared is 4, Take away 1, 1 squared is 1, leaves 3, so that side's root 3. The 1, 2, root 3 triangle. Notice, the side of length 1 is opposite the smallest angle. 2 is obviously the bigger angle, and root 3, because that's less than 2, because 2 is root 4, root 3 is opposite the 60. So the first thing in this question then is to recognise which angle's involved. Is it a 45, or a 30, or a 60? Is it a 1, 1 and a root 2, or a 1, 2 and a root 3? Then you have to decide which way you're going to proceed. Now this is only, I haven't mentioned this yet, this is only a two mark question. There's actually quite a lot that's involved here for just those two marks. And they're a bit unfairly distributed. Because the first mark is for finding what 2x comes to. And the last mark is just for halving it. And it's this first part that takes quite a bit of work. Now I'll do it twice because you can either do it in radians. And that would be the ideal way to do it. Because these questions are designed to have nice, neat, fr simple, fractional answers. The alternative is to do it in degrees, work through it in degrees, and then change it back to radians at the end. There's much more work there. 
but you may decide to do that because you feel happier with degrees. So I'll do it both ways. But if you do go the degree route, make sure you change it back to radians in the end or you'll lose those marks, that calculation mark. So the first part here would be this. If it's 1 upon root 2, then you could use your calculator. There's another thing. You could use your calculator for that. You shouldn't really, because you should recognise this as an exact angles question. But if you did use your calculator and set that into radians, you're going to end up with a decimal for your radians. And there's something else I should mention. When you give answers in degrees, usually you give the answer as whatever, 42.3. You give it to one decimal place. If you're going to put an, answer, an angle down in radians, well, a radian's a much bigger chunk than a degree. A radian means it's a natural measure of angle. Degrees are arbitrary. Many bits will I chop the circle into. 365 would have been ideal because of the year, but 360 has been chosen, or was chosen, because it had lots of different numbers that would divide into it. But a radian means quite specifically, a radian, one radian, is the angle which subtends an arc equal to a radius. That's why it's called a radian. The arc length is equal to the radius. And of course, that's not far off of a little isosceles equilateral triangle. But a radian then, well, how many of these radians would you get in a circle? Well, the distance all the way around a circle, the circumference is pi d, or 2 pi r, which means the number of radians will be that, divided by how much they take up, divided by r, so that means you've got two pi radians in a circle. <clears throat> so two pi radians is equal to 360 degrees, which means one radian divided by two pi. You can see from this anyway, it's almost 60 degrees, it's 53.7 degrees. The reason for all of this is, if you write answers to one decimal place for degrees, that's a tenth of a degree, to keep the same accuracy with radians, because radians are a much bigger chunk, if you like, then one degree would be one over, let's say, 57. So if you're taking it to a tenth of a degree, it should be that fraction of a radian for the same accuracy, and that's about two thousandths. That's about 0 0.002. Which means... In degrees, if you go for one decimal place for your accuracy, in radians, you should be going for three decimal places to achieve the same accuracy. So if you decide to use your calculator, which you shouldn't, and set it to radians, and do inverse cos of this and end up with a decimal in radians, write it down to three decimal places at least. That's what I mean about there's an awful lot to this. It's a simple little two-mark question, but there's all these parts to it. So, first of all, I'm going to do it in radians. So, I recognise 1 upon root 2 is 45 degrees, but 45 degrees is pi upon 4. That pairing came from pi is 180 degrees, because 2 pi was 360. So, 45, that's going to be a quarter of that, a quarter of that. But the other thing is, a cosine graph keeps repeating itself. So, there'll be a couple of answers. There'll be an answer here before 90, and there'll be the same answer again further on, just before 360. But you may well not do it by the symmetry in the graphs. You probably use the cast diagram, all sine, tan, cos. So if you were doing that, this is still for the first mark, you would say, right, I've got a cosine, and it's 1 upon root 2. Remind yourself of the little triangle. 1 upon root 2 means, well, they're both the same, means it's 45 degrees. 45 degrees is pi upon 4. Where does it go? It's a positive cosine, so that means it either goes in the first quadrant, I've either got 45 there, or 45 there. But I'm not going to do it in degrees, I'm going to do it in radians. So I've either got pi upon 4 there, so that's the first answer, or I've got pi upon 4 short of the whole lot, which is 360, which is 2 pi. And of course, 2 pi, if I'm dealing with quarters, I could write as, if I want it out of 4, I'll have to do 4 times the top, is 8. So that means I've either got pi up in 4, 1 lot of pi up in 4, or 1 lot short of this, taking 1 off of that, would be 7 pi up in 4. But before I do that, I should finish this off. 2x equals, get rid of the cosine from one side, 
remove it by applying the inverse. So it's inverse cos of 1 upon root 2. And from that then, I go through this and say, well, I recognise that. That's pi upon 4. Or, because it keeps repeating itself, it could be, one away from that, 7 pi upon 4. But there could be more. A cosine graph goes on forever. So I've got my first two answers. I could keep repeating them. But I only want my answers to be between 0 and pi, 0 and 180. And notice I've still not finished because I'm going to be dividing by 2. So dividing by 2 means I could put more in. And then dividing by 2 would bring them into range. But I wouldn't need to because if I added on 180 or pi to both of them, it would go too far. It would go out of range. Another way of doing that is to think, well, if the upper limit is going to be pi and I've got 2x, just go to double that. Go to 2 pi. Write all the answers as far as 2 pi. And as far as 2 pi is concerned, that's all you've got. Now, all of that is the first mark. Going through all of this, doing the inverse of course, recognising the angle for that, putting them into the correct quadrants and setting them down is the first mark. The second mark is trivial. It's simply for dividing them both by 2. And of course if you divide something by 2, whatever the fraction happens to be, that's the same as doubling the denominator, unless it happened to divide into the top. So these answers are going to be pi upon 8 and 7 pi upon 8 for the second mark. Now, if you decided to do it in degrees, you'd have done this. Same thing. You started off the same way. It's inverse cos of 1 upon root 2. And then you would say, ah, that's 45 degrees. So you're little, you would go to the triangle. Yep, 45 degrees. You put down your cast diagram. Yes, I've got 45 there or 45 there. So it's either 45 or it's going to be 45 short of 360, which is 315 for the 2x. The next part would be, strictly speaking, that quite that isn't quite your first mark yet because it's in degrees and not in radians. Would be divide them both by 2, which is a bit nasty, because now I've got 22.5 degrees or 157.5 degrees. And I can't leave my answer like that because I have to put it back into radians. So now I've got to mess about with changing degrees into radians. And this is the ratio you would use. 180 degrees makes pi radians. So if I've got degrees and I want radians, divide by 180 to knock out the degrees and multiply by pi. I'd have to do this. 22.5 over 180 multiplied by pi. 157 over 180 multiplied by pi. Which I suppose would be okay if you've got a calculator, if you're allowed to use a calculator, which you are here. But if it was in the exam, you'd have to do that by hand. And of course, the first problem is, I missed out the 0.5, you've got fractions as part of fractions. What you'd have to do here is double it up first, 45 over 360, then cancel it down. I'll just do this first one. Double it up, 45 over 360, and then cancel it down. Well, they both divide by 45. You get 145 there, and obviously there's 845s in the complete turn. So you've got your pi upon 8. So finally you would put it back to cancel that one down, pi upon 8, bring that back, 7 pi upon 8. Then you definitely get both of the marks. Now that took ages. Number 7 is worth double the number of marks, 4 marks, but it's more straightforward really. Number 7 is going to involve two right angle triangles. sitting together in some position. So they might be side by side that way, they may be back to back, so they're joined into a complete big triangle. There'll be two right angle triangles, and you'll be given the two perpendicular sides, which would be the tangent in other words. There'll be two triangles, one with an angle X, one with an angle Y, and then these sides will be given and in all of the variants of it, these triangles will be Pythagorean triples or some multiple of them. So that, for instance, a simpler one might be, this is 3, 4 for those sides. And this one I'll put down as 8, 15. That's another exact Pythagorean triple. You'll be given two triangles, which are Pythagorean triples. And the first part of the question will simply say, 
What's the value of, and it'll say for each of these triangles, either the sine or the cosine, any combination, sine x, sine y, cos x, cos y, sine x, cos y, cos x, sine y, just a pair of them. So I'll say, oh, just for instance, I'll put what's sine x and what's cos y. Now they'll be worth one mark each from this four mark question. And the way you do it from the triangle is just, again, it's going to be your Socatoa, if you still use that. Which means you need to finish off the triangles. So if you don't recognise them, you'll just have to go through the quick Pythagoras, square and add the two shorter sides to get the square of the longer side. Or if you recognise it, you say, ah, that's a 3-4-5 triangle. And if you recognise this one, that's an 8-15-17 triangle. So you have to put those two parts in yourself. However, the marks don't come until you write these two answers down. So the sine of x, sine means the opposite to the angle. That'll be the 8. So the sine of x is the 8 over the 17. And of course, sine and cosine always involve the hypotenuse. That's why you have to work those out. And the cosine of y means next to the y. What's next to the y? 4. So it's 4 out of 5. Those are the first two marks. But that's a lot easier than that question six. All you need to do is put in the two, the hypotenuse of both of these triangles, and then just write down the ratios. Part B will ask you to demonstrate that the exact, and that's an important thing, the exact value of some compound angle. Again, it could be a cosine, it could be a sine, it could be sine of x plus y or x minus y, the cosine of x plus y, x minus y, the exact value to show the exact value of one of those is equal to a certain fraction. I'll just, for this we'll say, of cos x plus y. Show that the exact value of cos x plus y is 36 over 85 for two marks. Now what you can't do is just go back to your original triangle and say, oh, that's the tangent of y. So I know that tan y is 3 quarters, so I can get y from inverse tan of 3 quarters, also archaically known as arc tan. Inverse tan of 3 quarters, get the angle, round it off approximately, do the same for x, and then add them together, and then find the cosine of that. You can't do that because it says what's the exact value. So if you do that, you'll get no marks at all. The exact value of that is going to come from expanding this and then using these two triangles, the 3, 4, 5 and the 8, 15, 17. So you look up the front, if you don't remember the formulae, but make sure you put X and Y. If you just write cos A plus B, or whatever letters it happens to use in the formula sheet, cos A plus B equals cos A, cos B, etc. That's no use. The first mark here is for saying, well, cos x plus y, look it up using x and y. And the template of it is cos x cos y minus sine x sine y. Now that gets you a mark. There's nothing to that, is there? Just copy the formula down or make sure, you, only make sure you put down the appropriate variables. The second mark's much lengthier because now I'm going to have to go through this triangle filling in all the bits and pieces. It's not that tricky, really. Cos of x means next to x. Next to x is 15, so it's 15 over 17. Cos of y, I know I've got it already, but I'll just go back to this, means next to y, 4 over 5. Minus sine of x means opposite x, that's 8 over the 17. Sine of y means opposite y, that's 3, 3 over 5. Here, but if any of those happen to cancel, don't cancel them down, because I want to add these two fractions together. So I need to preserve the denominators to make sure they're the same. And 5 seventeens is 85, so it's all out of 85, because both denominators are 85. And what have I got? Numerator here, 4 fifteens, 60. Numerator here, 3 eighths, 24. 24 away from 60 is indeed 36. And that's the second mark from part B. A lot more work involved there than there is just from this mark here. But essentially, that's question 7. It's fairly straightforward. Now, number 8.
Number eight is worth more marks again. It's worth five marks. And it'll be in the form of two parts. The first part will give you the expanded form of a compound angle formula, like that, for instance. Only this question's in degrees. So, annoyingly, every time you write down an angle, you'll have to put a degree sign in just to show it's not in radians. The first part is you'll have the expanded form and you have to write it in the compact form, the compound form. Except you don't have to decide for yourself. You would recognise this anyway. Cos, cos, plus, sine, sine. That's the cos of x minus 29. But it'll make it even easier for you because whichever of the four forms it gives you, it'll say, write that in the form and I'll put it down. So in this case, it would be cos of x minus something. Again, in degrees. So here I would just write down, well, that equals cos x minus 29. Well, we've got the degree sign already. That's a mark. You get a mark just for putting that number in there, basically. Second part is worth four marks, and it's for solving an equation. Well, it'll just be the equation you've got in part A. So it'll be this thing, whichever form you've got out of the four, you know, the cos cos plus or minus, or the sine cos plus or minus, whichever form you've got equal to some fraction. And there'll be, of course, a window, an interval for the solutions, and it'll have the angles between 0 and 360. Now, one of the annoying things here is, since x has got the degree sign on, on it already, when you say that x is to be between the angles between 0 degrees and 360 degrees, since x has already got the degree sign, the values here would just be numbers, as would your answers. You wouldn't write x is between 0 degrees and 360 degrees, because then x degrees would be 0 degrees degrees. Well, it says, solve that equation using what you have in the first part. Well, the result from part A is this thing here. So it means I've got to, for four marks, solve this equation. Which isn't too different from the equation you had to solve in question six. Only thing in question six, there was only two marks for solving it, and here you're going to get four marks for solving this. A slight difference, of course, is you have to use your calculator here. But at least it's in degrees. So the first part would be, how can I get down to x? Well, first of all, get rid of the cosine. That'll be inverse cos of 7 elevenths. So there'll be two parts to that. I've got the cosine graph. It's a positive value. So there's going to be two angles. One angle before 90 and one angle the same distance before the end. Or you may just use all sine time cos. But you have to use a calculator for this part. From this, you get the acute angle that would apply in the diagram, which is 50.478 and so on. So I'll just round that to 50.5 degrees. Then either think from the symmetry of the cosine graph, it's 50.5 forward from zero, which means it must be 50.5 back from 360. Or you use your cast diagram, all sine tan cos, and say the cosine's positive. So it's either in the first quadrant or all the way around to here, which is the 50.5 short of 360. So I can put down my two answers. I've got, but here's where you have to be careful. The x is just a number because I've got the degree sign already. You won't lose any marks if you mess this up because quite often you just ignore that fact and keep putting in degrees. Which means x minus 29 is going to be or 309.5. Now I'm not putting the degree signs in here because I'm next line I'm just going to write x minus 29 which is the degree part of it. And then to get x I just add on 29 to both of them. So 29 onto that would be, whoops, 79.5. Of course, you have to stop yourself from putting that degree sign. It just seems a natural urge to do it. If you put it in, you wouldn't lose any marks anyway. Or 29 onto that, which is 338.5. 
Now in my haste I forgot to go through all of the, the marks for that. Well the first mark is for simply replicating what you had in part A because it says use the result in part A. So replacing that by the result of part A gives you the first mark and that has to be written down. Don't try and just do this bit in your head. You have to make that statement or you won't get that mark. The next part is to find one of those angles. That's the 50.5. The other mark is for realising there's a second one and having that correct. And then the third mark is just for correctly adding 29 onto both of them. There's just one mark there. There's four marks here. So, now try the three questions. So question six then, solve this equation. Well, I'll just write it again here. So solve the equation tan 2x is 1 upon root 3. Now I'll do it in radians first of all, because the question is in radians. No degree signs, the pi confirms it anyway. The first part is, do I recognise which angle it is? Is it the 30, the 45 or the 60? Well, with a root 3 in it, it must be the 1, 2, root 3 triangle. Now, even though it's in radians, I'll still put down the 1 must be opposite 30, and that'll be 60, because you probably remember it better that way. It's also handy to remember them in radians, because there's a sort of similarity of numbers there. 30 degrees turns out to be pi upon 6, and 60 degrees turns out to be pi upon 3. You can always remember those. You know which one's bigger. The bigger one must have the smaller denominator, but notice the way they pair off. So you can remember them quite quite, quite easily. So with 1s and root 3s, I'm looking at either 60 or 30. What's a tan? It's opposite. So what's the 1 opposite? The 1's opposite the 30. So 1 being opposite the 30 means I've got pi upon 6. So 2x is inverse tan 1 upon root 3. So that would be pi upon 6. Then either think of the tangent graph. Now the tangent graphs are actually quite handy because the tangent graphs are just like waves. So as soon as you know one answer, the next answer, and these waves are all 180 degrees apart, or if you like, all pi apart. If you know one answer, the next one's just pi more than it. So if that's pi upon 6, the next one's going to be add on another pi, so that's another 6 sixths, it must be 7 pi upon 6. Or you could use your cast diagram. All sine, tan, cos. Positive tangent, so I've got my pi upon 6 in the first quadrant. Or I've got the pi upon 6 in the third quadrant. I've either got pi upon 6 or, all the way around, to pi upon 6 beyond pi. Notice I just add on pi. That's the first mark. For the second mark, just divide them by 2, which means double the denominators. Pi upon 12, 7 pi upon 12. Now that's it done in radians. If you wanted to do it in degrees, because you feel happier in degrees, well, it'd have been the same up to here, and this little triangle, just to remind you, unless you were quite confident with them. And the working would have been, well, 2x equals, and then you'd have said, ah, that's 30, so 30 degrees in the first quadrant, or 30 degrees in the third quadrant, so that's 30 beyond 180, so that's 210 degrees. Remember, that wouldn't be the second mark because this is in degrees and it should be in radians. You have to get to the final answer now if you want to take this particular route. So halving it would be 15 degrees and halving that would be 105 degrees. But to get the full two marks, if you just leave it like this, you only get one out of two. I'll have to change them back again. So you think, how do I go from degrees to radians? Well, divide by 180, because that would knock out the degrees, and multiply by pi radians. So I'd have these two answers, and then I'd have to cancel them down, either manually, or if, you're a, if a calculator is allowed, using your calculator. And of course, they would cancel down the same way. Maybe you'd have to take a bit of time, say, well, it divides by 3, then it divides by 5. Divides by 3 first, if you like. Divide by 3, 5 upon 60. Now divide by 5, 1 and 12. So pi upon 12, obviously the same answer. And then you may recognise that that is 7 times that. So that's 7 pi upon 12. Now I've got my two marks.
Question 7. There's the pair of triangles. This time they're joined together, so the 12 belongs to them both. Write down the exact value of cos of x and sine of y. Now there's no use in your calculator to define the angles and so on from the tangents and so on. You just complete the triangles. And they should all be Pythagorean triples. 5, 12, 13. This one, 9, 12, is actually a multiple of the 3, 4, 5 triangles. 3, 3s, three, 3, 4s, so 3, 5s. So that must be 15. But unfortunately, because I've got a multiple, that means whenever I write down one of the ratios, sine, cos or tan, they're bound to cancel because there's a common factor of 3 in this case. Well, cos of x, cos means adjacent. So, ka, tor, but you should be beyond that level anyway. Cosine is adjacent, so what's next to x? 9. So it's 9 out of the 15, but I can't leave it like that because they've got a common factor of 3, so it's 3 fifths. That's a mark. Sine of y. Sine is opposite. Opposite the y is 12, so it's 12 upon 13. That's a mark. Well, that was quite good. For these two marks, show the exact value of this. It's 56 upon 65, so no use in your calculator, you won't get the marks. Well, if you remember the formula, put it down, or if you're looking up the front or whatever the formulas happen to be, don't copy it down with the A's and B's or P's and Q's. You have to use X's and Y's. Sine X plus Y is sine X cos Y plus cos X sine Y. Now it's just a case of replacing each of these using the triangle. I've got a couple of them up here. But you'll tend just to look at the triangle anyway. Sine of x, opposite x. Opposite x is 12. So it's 12 over 15. And it'll cancel down. I'll do it later. Cos of y means next to y. So that's 5 upon 13. Cos of x means next to x. Now I know I've got it already, but I think I'll stick with this one. 9 upon 15. Sine of y means opposite y, which is 12. So that's 12 upon 13. Now this time I can do some cancelling because I can cancel these down. I don't want to cancel those parts out. I can cancel these down because they were multiples of the 3, 4, 5. You could save yourself that grief where, I could have done this to begin with, when you recognise that one of the triangles is a multiple of a 3, 4, 5 or whichever one, you could say, well, now I've got those three numbers, I'll just divide them back by 3. So I've got my 3, 4, 5. Because obviously the ratio will be cancelled down afterwards. And then you can say your cosine is 3 fifths and your sine is 4 fifths. Rather than having to go here and do it twice. So that's going to be dividing by 3, 4 fifths and dividing by 3, 3 fifths. But make sure the two denominators are the same. They're both 5 times 13. So the whole thing is out of 5 thirteens, which is 65. Numerator, 4 times 5, 20. Numerator here, 36. 20 and 36, 56 out of 65. So the two marks were, first of all, for this expansion. For saying that equaled that. And then you had to go through all of this to get the second mark. To get your four marks out of four. So number eight then, for five marks. First part, write this in this form, so it's already been done for you. All you have to say is, well, that A must be that 17. So just write that down with a 17. There's a mark for you. That's fairly easy. Sine of X plus 17 degrees. There's the first mark. Part B said, I didn't write it down, obviously. Using the result of part A, solve this equation. Well, the result says this big bundle here can be replaced by that. That is the correct expansion of the sine of an angle plus an angle. Sine cos plus cos sine. So that can be replaced by sine of x plus 17. Don't forget the degree sine equals 8 upon 13. There's the next mark. Make sure you write this down. Now it's just a case of how to get down to x. It's only one mention of x. Get rid of the sine, then get rid of the 17. We'll get rid of the sine first. I'll just keep the degree sign in just now. It means I've got inverse sine of 8 thirteenths. That's not one of the known ones, so it's not going to be one of those two triangles. That's the calculator case. And you get the angle, the acute angle, 
37.9798 and so on, which that rounds off quite neatly to 38.0 degrees. I'll put in the point zero to show the accuracy. Now that's the next mark, but I'll want to put it here before I get to that. Then the second part would be, what's the other angle, because I want the angles up to 360. Then you can either think from the symmetry of the graph, a sine graph looks like this, and at 8 thirteenths I've got one answer here, which was 38 degrees along, so the next answer must be at the same level, same amount, because the two parts are symmetrical, which is 38 back from 180. So I've got 38 and 180 minus 38. I've got 38.0, or I've got 142.0 degrees. But I've fallen into that little trap because I don't want to mention degrees because I want my final answers to say x equals. So it's fair enough to put that part down, but in the next part I'm just going to say x plus 17 instead of having to have degrees, 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 degrees. Or you may have used your cast diagram. All sine, tan, cos. The 38 degrees, since it's positive, will either be in the first or the second. So if it's 38 degrees there, I've got 38 degrees. Or if it's 38 degrees here, I've got all the way around to 38 short of 180. Because that's just an analogue for this graph itself. And the last part is, this time since it's plus 17, take 17 off them both. But before I do that, I should mention that is the second mark of this bit of the calculation. That is the third mark. And the fourth mark for part B is just for subtracting 17 correctly from both of them. So that would be 17 from that is 21 degrees, and 17 from that 5 is 125 degrees. Oh, almost put the degree signs in again. Those blobs there aren't degree signs. Those are just where the marks were allocated. So final answer, x equals 21.0 or 125.0. There's the five marks. If you can't stop your hand putting in those because you know you just want to finish off those degree signs, you wouldn't lose a mark for that, that would just be bad form.